Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So, uh, today, as you can see, we are not working on the iPad nor on Procreate. So, we are going to be working Clip Studio Paint, and I'm going to be drawing on the Gaumon PD2200, I believe it's called. And the reason being is that I wanted to tackle doing more line work uh, more recently. So I'm going to be taking you guys through a little bit of real-time footage of me doing line work, of me drawing Ike, um, who is part of Nijisan GEM. So let's do some fan art today and I'll talk a little bit about what I'm trying to do and why I'm not really doing it in Procreate. So in the past, I did talk about that I kind of have like a disdain towards doing line work and it's not really coming from the idea of um, well, I mean, a little bit's coming from the idea of it being painstakingly long. Um, a lot of people don't really like doing the line work stage, I find the most. I think people tend to like sketching and people tend to like coloring. But in terms of like visually, I think people find the satisfying part to be when people do line work because it's like a lot of those longer, more precise, very clean, fluid strokes. But uh, personally, line work and line art are just is my least favorite step. And I find that it's kind of a little bit more of how I view it in a way or what I do with the line work. So in the past, I did a lot more like chibi work and whenever I did like any chibis, I made the line work quite thick. And because a lot of chibis kind of read a little bit better with a little bit less detail in certain areas just for readability sake as like, you know, their bodies are super tiny usually, their heads are quite large. Um, you kind of need a little bit of push and pull towards what you want to be in focus, whether or not things look a little bit too cluttered. And for me, sometimes when I did chibis, if I didn't want to make things too clutter like cluttered, I made things more simplified. And I also did thicker line work because if I did thicker line work alongside with more details, things look a little bit too busy. Um, but I also noticed that the way I color differs from how I do my line work as well. If you guys watched, I think my last video of 2022, which is I think drawing outfits for my OCs. I think that's what it was, like drawing new outfits for them. Um, you will notice that there's a little bit of a, what feels kind of like a style shift or a difference between how I drew Maseki and the rest of them versus how I'm inking Ike today because I did show the inking process and pretty much the entire process of drawing all four of my OCs and I did a lot thicker line work and the canvas size, I don't know if it was appropriately sized for the drawing I wanted to do if that makes sense. So. Just to give a little bit more information on the setup, I think for Maseki's drawing, I'll put them on the screen by the way, and I'll show some examples of what I used to do in the past where I had a lot more thicker line work alongside um, kind of more like simple coloring-ish. In the beginning, I actually did a lot more like cell shading in combination with that with like soft gradients and bolder line work. But what I'm trying to do today is do thinner line work, add more details so that it complements more of a painterly style as well. And we'll talk about that in a little, a little bit. So, um, I'm trying to think. Yes, I was going to talk about the canvas size. So I think for the Masaki and the rest of them, they were done on a 3000 by 2000 canvas, whichever is like width and height. Basically, the longer one is 3000, the shorter one was 2000. And I don't think it was appropriately sized for how I personally wanted to do the OCs if I wanted to do them with more detail. So in comparison, I do have my brush set to size six for both this Ike drawing well, I guess like all these Ike drawings alongside with my Masaki ones, all done with the size six brush. Um, I will make sure to link all the brushes in the description if you guys have any questions. Um, I don't really remember the name of the brush for this, but I'll make sure to link it. For the coloring, I used two different brushes, so I kind of switched back and forth. And the sketching, I used the froggy pencil this time as the right boru pen I didn't want to use because I kind of like using that pencil if I'm doing sketches that are kind of like standalone. Like I'm not planning to color them, I'm not planning to do line work or anything. Um, it's just like me focusing on working with values and hatching and all that stuff because I like keeping it rough and a little bit more um, 
like like a sketch if that makes sense like leaving all those lines in and not erasing too much if i don't need to but back to the line work so you can see i'm kind of approaching the line work a little bit differently i'm trying to think a little bit about the thickness of like the article of clothing i did a lot more detail for the hair strands and the reason being is that i wanted to give myself a little bit more structure in terms of the lines because recently i guess there's kind of like two reasons why i really wanted to tackle this one is that recently i find myself wanting to have more structure because of the back and forth of using my sketch as kind of like my lines for my coloring and then merging them i feel like sometimes i lose that structure and i keep going back and forth trying to refix lines after i color in certain things and it's just like a lot of back and forth the second thing is that on twitter there was like a video of a person i follow them now at this point because i think their art's really cool but they were doing like flawless line work in clip studio paint on the ipad and i was just like mesmerized about the confidence and their fluid inking and the line uh variation and stuff for their style and it's really pretty and i noticed that i think i do prefer thinner line work and whenever i do line work anytime basically and i do it like i said mostly for chibi work i always gravitate towards doing like thicker lines which i think is not benefiting from what i'm trying to do um, because i want to add a little bit more detail because of that structure so masaki and the rest of them is kind of a good example of the combination of a thicker line work and my what i would deem as like my default coloring so if you guys known like in the past before i started working in procreate in around i think 2020 um i primarily used paintle sai and in paintle sai i've been using it since i was like 12 ish i think 12 or 13 and there's like a certain way i colored at a certain point where i describe as my phase of where i plateaued because i became heavily convinced that this is how i wanted to color this is how i want people to know that this is kind of like my art kind of thing this is why it's bad to get stuck in an idea of wanting to have a specific style and keeping it that way forever because it does stunt your growth so make sure you're always constantly wanting to look for improvement or look for other methods or trying different things to kind of supplement uh you're just like supplement your artwork because your style will change as more like the more you learn about different topics and it will change like the way you view things or the way you approach things which is what i'm doing today with the line work so um i did do my best to just approach everything just a little bit differently so i did use a different inking brush it has a little bit more of a texture um i've also set the stabilization to 15. i feel like Paint Tool Sai and Clip Studio Paint have a different range for stabilization, so I don't know how to describe it. In Paint Tool Sai, I use a lot more control, and it does help me have a little bit of a faster workflow for the most part, and I think it's also because I simplify the shapes a little bit. Kind of went on a tangent. We'll get back to my previous topic after, because it will make sense when we get to the coloring stage anyways. But... For Clip Studio Paint, um, yeah, I have my stabilization set to 15, which I think is not too high compared to its range. Um, I just don't really prefer Clip Studio Paint's um, stabilization all that much, um, to be honest. So 15, I think, was a good range for me to have a little bit of control, allowing the pen to kind of slow down as I'm making my stroke, along with me being able to still do a lot of quick strokes and quick kind of movements so that I could fix certain things. So it still feels like just a itty bitty bit amount of sketchiness, if that makes sense. And I feel like in Paint Tool Sai, I set it to, I think, S... What is the highest on there? S7? I think I have anywhere between S4 and S7 for the line work. And that gives me the most amount of control. I've always used this the most when I didn't have a screen tablet. And I actually found it a lot easier to use when I didn't have a screen tablet because I could easily see my lines follow my sketch much easier without my hand being in the way. And I find that a lot, kind of like a little bit more beneficial compared to now. Um, I do find it a little bit more difficult having my pen in the way of when that slowing motion is there But it's more akin to I guess traditional art minus the slow motion of the stabilization if that makes sense 
Um, but let's talk about the coloring just a itty bit before we get there. So for me, because I simplified the line work to a certain degree, I wasn't, um, how do I describe this kind of thought process? It's like a weird thing I did with my brain due to habit. So because it's habit, it was harder for me to break and I have to be more like self-conscious about how I'm coloring. So basically, if I have simple lines, I, in my brain, I think I'm going to make my coloring a little bit more detailed to supplement the simple line work. But a part of me also just gets lazy and just defaults to how I usually color the hair, which tends to be a little bit more like soft gradient, a little bit of indication of shadow for each like section of the hair, and then kind of like highlights around it. That's basically it. Sometimes I add a bit of a gradation of the skin tone on top of the bangs and then any kind of like supplementary colors for like the back of the hair or a bit of the edges just to make it tie in with the rest of the color combination or color scheme. But um, you're going to see today that I actually meticulously kind of go through and kind of color in such a way that's a little bit more reminiscent of how I usually do it on Procreate, which is a little bit more painterly. Because, um, to be honest, me shifting kind of a more painterly style where I'm not heavily focused on doing line work in Procreate has helped me a lot just coloring in general. And I've definitely transferred that kind of like knowledge and a little bit of that skill set towards how I render clothing, but not so much of how I did hair. And I don't know if it's because of like, I don't really like the brushes as much or I'm just not used to drawing on the tablet or whatever it may be. I just didn't really take the time to kind of really think about making sure that's how I want to color the hair, if that makes sense. We'll see that once I get into um, coloring his hair, I do pretty much the similar steps of how I do it in Procreate. I lay down like a base tone, I add in shadows, I add in a band of highlights, I add any supplementary colors, and then once I have those kind of all settled in, I'll just go and start color picking and then doing kind of more details and strands so that the hair kind of reads a little bit more detailed compared to just like a band of shadow and a band of highlight like across a surface but yeah and in terms of the stabilization like I said I did like having the freedom of being able to do quick swift movements it helped me do the eyes a little bit better um because that's another thing whenever I did like chibi eyes or like I think it even like probably Masaki and the gang where I did their eyes, I kind of do like a big chunky block for the upper eyelid and like a thinner one for the bottom lid. And then sometimes I color in a solid uh, flat color for the whole entire iris. And I didn't do that this time. So all I did was that I did kind of like an indication of the upper lid and then, but like kind of like the side of it. And then at the edges, I kind of thinned it out. So we have a little bit of lashes. And then for the iris, I just did an outline and then an indication of the pupil because I wanted to make sure I knew which way the character was going to be looking. And yeah, I just thought it was more appropriate to add it in during the line work phase rather than in the coloring phase. I think like moving forward, Bigger canvas is better for me. I still have it around 300 to 350 DPI just in case if I ever want to print these for something. Um, but I think it just helps a little bit with the line work being a little bit on the thinner side. Now, this is not like super thin line work, but it is more thinner, like thinner compared to how I usually work. Now, we are going to be in time lapse mode for the rest of the duration of the video just because uh this took painstakingly too long and even though i did say that i wanted to do line work to kind of help with my workflow a little bit to be a little bit quicker so i don't have that back and forth i i still need to find like a happy medium between the two so that i kind of still have structure um but still have that flexibility and just like being able to change things if I really need to on the spot because I also noticed that like on the larger more like waist up version of Ike his right hand I guess it's left on the canvas it's a little bit too large and in procreate or if I did a more painterly style at this point everything would have been merged in one layer and I would have been able to liquefy or change things at will um, instead of having to go through the line work and then having to adjust the colors 
Now, um, unfortunately, I don't have my layers shown on the side, but I did do my best to kind of minimize the amount of layers I use because that's something I still like to do regardless. And it is a bit of a habit coming from Procreate where I do have a little bit more of limited layers due to depending on the amount of space you have on your iPad and stuff. Um, I still like to keep it somewhat under a certain amount of layers. Um, yes, but yeah, now you can see how I'm doing the hair. So like I said, I did a indication of the lights and the shadows. I added some strands and then I added a band of highlights. And then now I'm going in and kind of going back and forth and kind of just fleshing out the hair so that it reads a certain way. I decided to put the references on the right side rather than the left side. And then I had a new window of a duplicate of my current canvas that I'm working on Ike and having that on the top left hand corner as well so that I can see what it looks like zoomed out. Because that's another thing I kind of need to be aware, kind of like aware of when I'm working is that if I'm planning to do something detailed, I still want it to read correctly overall so that I don't get too hyper fixated or I don't tunnel vision into one area. So yeah, I try to make sure to kind of keep a bigger view of everything because I tend to zoom in quite a bit sometimes um, working on certain areas and fleshing that out and overall it might not benefit the whole piece. So just to keep that balance, it's nice to have it like that. But back to the layers, um, for the most part, the skin, I think I did it all in one layer. I did the eyes on a separate layer and then I did the highlights above my line work because I did the highlights afterwards and because I did the pupils during the line art kind of phase, I need to have the highlight to be above it if I want it to read correctly um, because that's another thing. I think when I do like anime stylistic kind of drawing, I think a lot of people do this too. You kind of put the highlight not overlapping the pupil, but if you think about it, the highlight isn't like a physical thing. Like you, like your pupil is a hole in your eye, right? But the highlights is over your sclera creating that glossy effect. So, you know, there's going to be some times where the highlight is above the, the pupil and, you know, maybe it's like even overlapping from where the iris in your sclera is. So there's kind of that I need to play around with just to create more better lighting and stuff. But mm. so um, coloring the clothing, I did do the all the base coloring on one layer. Um, I did my best to keep everything clean and um, in the right places. Added a new layer, set it to multiply, and I am doing the shadows. I'm adding a little bit of gradations here and there. You can see what I mean about the adjusting right here. It's beneficial in a some like some sense because I'm not budging like the skin and the hair to do the new rim of the glasses if I were to do in my painterly style. But when I do line work, um, I do have to go into the line work, change it, go back into the coloring, change it. So it's like, it's kind of a give and take in that sense. It's just like what you prefer. But like I said, I do more of a painterly style when coloring. So I, after I finish doing the highlights and the shadows for the entirety of the clothing with using blend mode. So I use overlays and I use uh, multiply layer. If there's intense lighting, I will do an addition layer as well. But after that, I merge everything to the clothing layer and then I alpha lock it so we keep everything together and then I will start to paint. So I'm just basically color picking, adding surrounding colors to each other to make things look and read a little bit more cohesive. And that's basically it. I don't think there's too much to talk about the clothing wise. I think my most biggest gripe was the hair. Um, probably because like when I work on hair, that's like the part that gets sacrificed the most from my lack of ability or lack of motivation to want to do details if that makes sense i don't like i feel like in previous videos i always put like line work in a bad light because i always say i dislike line work and i dislike it because i feel like it didn't benefit um the way how i used to work but i think you know there's definitely benefits to it and i like having some kind of structure and I would like to incorporate it in some kind of way in the future if I can and I definitely need to practice a little bit more doing line work in Procreate because just doing line work on the iPad for me there's still a little bit of a disconnect for whatever reason so I'll do a little bit of practicing on there as well um I lost my train of thought because I was gonna say something but I wanted to to say something else and I forget now mm, okay but yeah. Oh, it's about the line work thing. Like I said, um, 
The reason why I don't like line work was just because I didn't think it benefited um, my work that much because I did it in a way that I technically dislike. Um, I definitely prefer thinner line work for the most part. Not like uber thin, super detailed, just enough for me to work um, as well as, you know, I'm able to do line work. I think that's also another misconception people think is that I use my sketch as my uh, line work because they think I'm unable to do line work for whatever reason. I can do line work. It's just I didn't prefer it and I just didn't really like it at some point. But hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and here is the finished result of Ike. Kind of just a few different uh, sketches all together on one page and finished up to a certain point. Yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll see you guys next time.